All right, now the highlight of the evening and really the moment that we've all been waiting for. The last and most prestigious award is being awarded by one of our past Pioneer Business Leader awardees. For the past eight years, Pioneers in Purpose have honored distinguished business leaders in Silicon Valley who have had a passion and a commitment to education. The list of Pioneer Business Leader Award honorees is impressive and it really reads like a who's who of Silicon Valley. Mr. John Chambers, Mr. John Thompson, Bruce Chisholm, Jensen Huang, Michael Marks, Faisal Sohail, and Larry Sonsini. Tonight, we're gonna to add another name to that list, Mr. Mike McNamara. Ladies and gentlemen, if you please help me in introducing you to Mr. Ray Bingham, who will be doing the honors for us. He's the Advisory Director of General Atlantic, and he will be presenting tonight's award. Still not smarter than a sixth grader. Um, let me start by reminding you, one of the first comments that was made here this evening, Julia Leeson, uh, our sixth grade teacher of the year, asked rhetorically, why are you all here? And uh, Julia, I don't know if you're still here or if you're making sure students get home to bed so that they can wake up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed tomorrow morning for school. But, uh, but I thought it was a great question. It was perfect. Look, we've sold out this room. We have, we have a group of, of very important supporters here representing all of Silicon Valley to help us lift children to a brighter future that matches the opportunities that are being created right here in our backyard. Julia, I think, I think we're here because every single one of us are invested because we have children, we care about children and we know that they're our future. Now, Muhammad insisted that I tell you this story and you may have already heard it, so I'll be very brief. Uh, I'm here, the reason that I'm here and got interested in this program was ignited by my parents who were elementary school teacher in a small Arizona town when I was growing up in the, uh, the 50s and 60s. And at that time, there was a population of young students that were in our area, Hispanic, Hispanics and Chinese fleeing the then revolution in China, that were entering the workforce without the language to participate. It wasn't work, it wasn't ethic, it wasn't character, it was a lack of language. Well, uh, Jessica, in her remarks, mentioned that it's a lack of language to date that's keeping our students from participating in the opportunities that are here right now for us and on the increase. And that's a big part of the story that I believe Mike McNamara represents in as we honor him this evening. Um, everybody knows the story of the iPhone and on the back it says, designed in California, made in China. Flextronics is leading a very important reshoring of a lot of those jobs. And the catch is that those jobs are digital jobs. They're technical jobs, they're math jobs. And they require a language that many of our students simply are not prepared to teach. And we've honored a number of very important influencers tonight outside of Silicon Valley Education Foundation that are helping lift those children in a very material way. I'm here participating as part of the Education Foundation because I want to celebrate their efforts and the efforts that all of you are making by being here tonight and helping us honor Mike McNamara, Mike McNamara as he and his company help create digital job opportunities for the pipeline that we're creating with our efforts to train children in this new language. Mike's a pretty private person. Um, he's not out there, you know, doing things to promote his own identity or his own uh, image. He's always focused on doing what's best for Flextronics and doing what's best for the community. 
Mike is very passionate about many, many, many things, but particularly science and education because we're a high-tech company and I think he personally values education and science is so key to, to Silicon Valley and, and particularly to our own company. I think that makes him even more passionate, but he's passionate about education in everything from science and technology through to corporate social and environmental responsibility. He is a very driven person who deeply cares. I can tell you from my experience with the, the business leaders that work for him, he has set the right tone in the company. They have been thought leaders in the Bay here in terms of advancing the cost for education and the cost for STEM. So if you know Mike, you know he's a very passionate and animated person. When he gets excited, everybody in the room knows, and he's excited about the mission of the Silicon Valley Education Foundation. He believes in the cause, he's a great ambassador, and as a result, I don't think you could have a better winner of this award. So let me introduce Mike McNamara. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate it. And good evenings, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, especially a good evening to all these Flextronics people out here, of course. You know, you know, I think it's been a great evening so far, and um, I'm only disappointed in one thing so far. Yeah, I say it. Yep, we brought 25 children up here, 25 school kids ranging anywhere from an eighth grader to a sophomore, and I didn't hear one of them say they wanted to go into manufacturing. <laughs> I mean, what is up with that? I don't know. Jeez. But it's great to be here tonight, and it's truly an honor to be recognized as a recipient for the Silicon Valley Foundation 2013 Pioneer Business Leader. It's also an honor to join such the, a distinguished list of guests, um, many of which were already mentioned, um, that you've, we've all recognized in the past. It seems that tonight we share a similarity for at least three things that bring us together this evening. First, we recognize the importance of supporting our local public education. Here in the innovation and technology capital of the world, right here, Silicon Valley. Second. We share a commitment to helping to raising the bar in science, technology, engineering, and math educational programs, and the promise that it holds for our youth, the students of today, and the workforce of tomorrow. Third, we're united in our belief that as business leaders and community members, it's critical that we do our part to help public schools by sponsoring and supporting organizations like the Silicon Valley Education Foundation, who help prepare students for college and the global workforce that is increasingly competitive. I commend Silicon Valley Education Foundation and its achievements and in advancing educational programs and initiatives for youth in Silicon Valley. The organization has brought positive change to the lives of many already in our community. Tonight's recognition is personally meaningful to me because it underscores my commitment to the endeavors that center on education and technology. I'm honored to support this foundation based on the dedication to serving youth through programs that aim to further educate and empower, such as the Stepping Up to Algebra program. I had the privilege of visiting the, this program in action at Luther Burbank School here in San Jose during the summer. It was really impressive to watch the interaction between the teachers and the students. And I encourage everyone here to visit a classroom or the Silicon Valley Foundation program if you can. I have no doubt that you will leave feeling proud after witnessing in person the power of your support as it helps us to build a more secure foundation for the future of Silicon Valley students. Flextronics has 200,000 people worldwide, and we are one of the largest employers in many countries in which we operate. As a result of that size and scale, I have a unique perspective to actually see how these countries develop and how and where they put their resources to work. 
The intersection of government and business and education is not a new one, but it is an intersection point that will determine a country's ability to first drive productivity, which is a necessity to improve a standard of living, and second, to innovate so they can compete on the world stage. I would like to share a few personal experiences with you all tonight around the upper education and the realities of what businesses need to thrive. The first is my experience as a guest lecturer at MIT. For several years, I've taught a leadership session, a case study, and a supply chain strategy lecture. These classes were for the Sloan School of Management program, which is an MBA level program, and the Leaders of Manufacturing program, which is a dual master's degree program of engineering and management for supply chain professionals. So these are the top degrees at one of the top universities. And when teaching, I often started the class by asking, how many of the students are from the United States? And how many are here from outside the country? In most classes, typically 40 to 50% of the students were from outside the United States. The MIT students were extraordinarily engaging, really inquisitive, and asked thought-provoking questions. These were really impressive people. I often wondered how many would ultimately stay in the United States. Two years ago, I was in Singapore at the Singapore Economic Development Board. And when I walked in, two of the individuals greeted me. And they said, nice to see you again, Mr. McNamara. We really enjoyed your classes at MIT. As you can imagine, I was pretty surprised. As it turns out, the Singapore government sends the top six individuals from the country into the United States, best universities, and when they come back, they were required to work for the government for multiple years. MIT selects them because they can. They get the best people from around the world and provide an extraordinary education. I just have two issues with this. We have the best universities in the world. And yet when we find and educate the best of the best, often a visa is not available, which makes no sense. Let's educate the best and let's keep them. It also begs the question why we here in the United States do not have more people that are the best of the best, that can occupy these precious slots. We need more technical talent developed in this country. Another experience I'd like to share is from the Flextronics Made in USA program. We are the largest electronics manufacturer in the United States today. We have over 10,000 people, and we have over 7 million square feet of production capacity in eight different states. One very interesting program is a mass customization factory we put up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area several months ago to build the Moto X cell phone. We were able to ramp this factory from nothing to 2,500 people over the course of 12 weeks. And this ramp provided very interesting data for me as the ability to find technical people that knew electronics, mechanics, or robotics was severely limited. And when ramping the factory to meet this demand, we had to resort to parachuting in more than 100 professionals from multiple Flextronics factories to get the factory ramped. We were not able to hire enough trained technical talent to ramp this factory at the speed we wanted to ramp it. If the United States wants to compete in electronics manufacturing with other countries, this talent gap problem must be solved. Another element of Flextronics Made in USA initiative includes Silicon Valley. The amount of innovation that's occurring in Silicon Valley right now is stunning. We are proud to have a million square feet right here in Silicon Valley and more than 2,000 people right here in the valley. Innovation is at a peak. Product life cycles are shorter. 
Disruptive products are coming out more quickly. Innovation is occurring at a rapid rate. In our, in our need to co-innovate or to learn and problem solve real time with our customers during product launches is accelerating. The design to consumption cycle is shrinking. We've added $30 million of upgraded facilities, labs, and we have built what we call Lab 9, which is a place for new innovators to come to our facilities and co-locate with us to get to the, their products to market faster on the scale, on the back of our scale. This innovation economy of Silicon Valley is only enabled through scalable engineering talent. And to be clear, the limiter here is not the ideas. It is the ability to execute with educated people. It is our belief that the Silicon Valley Education Foundation programs will stimulate our students to embrace technical degrees. We must have a bigger pipe of technical people feeding our innovation economy. And this must come from science, technology, engineering, and math programs. The last experience I would like to share tonight includes my involvement in serving on the board of the School of Economics and Management of Tsinghua University in Beijing. And I've been doing this for the last seven years. Think of Tsinghua as kind of the Harvard MBA of China. It is a feeding ground of talent into the Chinese businesses and heavily into the political leadership of the country. Flextronics also sponsors a chair professorship at Tsinghua for a class on corporate social and environmental responsibility. We have 100,000 people in China today and believe that people, environment, ethics, governance, and community partnership form the foundation of innovative and proactive solutions. And this allows us to continually improve our corporate citizenship. We also believe that attention given to the subject is never enough. We are proud to be doing our part with a highly levered strategy of educating and training the students who are the best and the brightest and will likely be running the companies and the government in the future. We influence the current students about corporate social and environmental responsibility who we expect will then influence China in the future. This is a very highly levered strategy. For six of the years, as I was on the board, we discussed different approaches to get better professors, how to fund various programs, how to improve the curriculum. You know, topics that I would consider to be more traditional items concerning a school. However, over this past year, the conversation has shifted. It shifted to address how the university would use its vast resources and talented student body and professors to nurture and stimulate innovation and start new businesses. We have a lot of competition, and that competition is increasing. I had most, one of the most interesting conversations in China in April of this year. When Flex, Flextronics took over all the cell phone operations for a customer. And as this included acquiring thousands of people in China and Brazil, we were required to receive antitrust approval from the government. I personally went to Beijing to make sure it happened quickly and seamlessly. I met with the Vice Minister of Commerce and his team and asked for their support to achieve this antitrust approval. After about 30 minutes, they stopped the meeting. They said they would actively support my request and, and meet our requested timeline. I thought, great. Then they told me they wanted to talk about something else. Specifically, they told me, we want to know how many jobs we are losing to your Made in USA initiatives from you and the rest of the country. They spent the next 30 minutes quizzing me about all the Made in USA programs across the United States. They were not prepared to sit back and let jobs roll back to the United States. They were deciding how serious the problem was 
and thinking about what policies they would use to deal with the problem. But this is not just a challenge in China. Ever since the economic downturn, it is not just the United States that is amping up their programs to create jobs. All of the countries want jobs. All of those countries are fighting for the jobs. There is a serious worldwide competition for these jobs, and we need educated and talented people to ensure those jobs come back to the United States. We need to compete with education, and we need more science and engineering degrees in our country to support manufacturing and innovation. Silicon Valley is the innovation capital of the world. Let's make sure it stays that way. We will not maintain this crown of innovation on the back of humanities degrees. Not that I want to pick on anybody with humanities degrees. But this is a science and technology forum, <laughs> and we all are about innovation. But it's only going to be maintained through a pipeline of very talented science and engineering graduates that the, Sci that the Silicon Valley Education Foundation helps to influence through its programs. The Silicon Valley Education Foundation will educate our students early and bring the right training at the right time. As business leaders and community members, we all have a responsibility to see what is happening in the world, to learn and to adapt. Government leaders need to be aware of the real world out there and the competition that exists. Teachers unions need to adopt practices like industry, practices that invite change, that include technology and innovation in the classroom, reject traditional ways of doing things, and embrace an objective of better educated students. <laughs> and not an objective of settling for average. The future is in our schools and in the innovation programs that they're able to provide our future leaders. Every one of you here tonight is helping to develop and grow the leaders that our business community needs for the future by supporting tonight's event. And as the technology and innovation capital of the world, the Silicon Valley business community will continue to lead the way. Let's give this community the best and brightest students in the world. So thank you for doing your part. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for listening to my words and spending the evening with us tonight. And, and please support the Silicon Valley Education Foundation so that we can support our innovation and our businesses. Thank you. Wow.